So managing DevOps projects is a little bit different than managing like software projects or IT projects. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I manage my projects and why I do it that way. Hey, what's going on? I am Will. This is DevOps for Developers. And in like the 10 or so years that I've been doing DevOps, plus the 25 plus years that I've been working in technology period, I've kind of built my own patterns or like decided how I want to run my projects. And so if we look at the way that things are done in the software development world, um, you see a lot of teams using Scrum as their project management. And that works really well for them because it's based on a short iteration cycle with frequently changing requirements. And so it works out well for that. In the IT world, you tend to see um, more waterfall type projects. And by waterfall, that means like things, like if you have a list of tasks, they're all lined out sequentially, do A, then B, then C. And that works well for them because a lot of times the task might be install a server in the data center, but you can't install the server until you build the server. You can't build the server until you actually have the parts. Can't get the parts until you get, you know, approval from finance to cut a PO, you know, and so all of those things have to happen sequentially. But DevOps, we're a little bit different for multiple reasons, but let's focus on the project here. So we're kind of held by the constraints of both of those models because we bridge those two worlds together, right? So we can't really predict when a server outage is gonna occur. So that makes it impossible for us to schedule that on a project timeline. Russell can't just ignore that outage because it's not scheduled for our current sprint or on our project timeline. So for me, I tend to follow more of a Kanban style model. So what that means is I break all of my tasks down or projects down into different tasks and all of those immediately go to the backlog. And there'll typically be a lot of stuff on the backlog. And then whenever I'm looking for work to do or scheduling out my next couple of weeks worth of work, I'll grab the things that look like they're gonna either be due within that time frame or need to get done within that time frame, and I'll pull those over into selected for development. So now the things that I'm actually working on right this very minute, those go over to in progress. And I tend to limit in progress tasks to two or three tasks per person because you know sometimes you'll be working on something and you'll get blocked or you're waiting on someone or something to, to happen. And so if you have another ticket in there that you're working on, you can switch over to that and you can keep making forward progress. But at the same time, I've also learned that if you tend to have more than two or three tickets in in progress, then you end up spending a lot of time getting ready to do work instead of actually doing work. So when that happens, it's totally acceptable to take something from in progress and move it back to selected develop for development or even back to the backlog if it's something that just can't make forward progress at this time. In the event of unexpected work, like either an outage happens or you have to switch over and help another team get out of a bind, it's really easy using this method to just create a new ticket and immediately drag it over to in progress. So one last tip I'll give you on this Every ticket here has a unique ticket number, and I always try to reference that ticket number in my repository branches and in my pull requests, and that makes it really easy to get like the backstory for a code change. If you're looking at the Git history, you can see why these changes, changes were made, what we were trying to accomplish, and vice versa, whenever you're looking at a ticket, you can see which individual commits or code changes were made in order to fulfill a request of that ticket. So there you go, that's how I manage my projects. If you enjoyed this video and you're interested in a career in DevOps, you might wonder what a day in DevOps looks like. And so I edited one of my recorded and edited one of my days and put it in a video that I will link here as the end card and also link it down below. If you like this video, I would appreciate it if you click the like button. If you didn't like it, 
click the dislike button because I know you can't see the count, but I still can. And that helps me understand what content you guys like so I can create more content that you want to see. And also think about leaving a comment down below with the parts that you did like or didn't like. I'd really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.